Well, I think one of the big differences between 2018 is that the Fed has locked down the short end of the yield curve. Mm. Uh, 2018 and sort of, uh, was all about the yield curve shifting upwards in one go and taking a very big hit in terms of the cost of capital uh, for the economy. So in many ways, up until Q2, the Fed has still got your backs in terms of taking on risk. It's only the long end of the yield curve that we've really got to worry about. And real interest rates at the moment are still negative. And the other thing I would also point out, compared to where we were nearly 12, 14 months ago, is the dollar's been weakening. And so you've actually had quite a, almost a double, triple easing um, compared to what we had, again, eight, uh, 12, 18 months ago. So essentially, we're, we're unwinding all the tightening that we had during that one, over that one year. Uh, in terms of uh, whether you're constructive or not for the year ahead, uh... What's your view on earnings growth themselves, putting aside multiples? Well, that, that was a paradox for um, 2019. It was essentially flat and the market went up over 20 per cent. Uh, the consensus where we are is around about is that it's going to be something to, between 8 to 10 per cent earnings growth. The thing for me is that uh, this judgment about the trade dispute can all be reflected in infantries. And we saw the data today, wholesale infantries in the United States starting to drop. That should mean that sometime from Q2, manufacturing sector does start to kick in and starts to rebuild infantry and in industrial production should pick up as well. One thing I always look at is the uh, CRB rind index, the industrial spot in prices, and they've just been starting to pick up and break through some of their long-term moving averages. How much of this hinders hinges on the dollar and the next move there? A lot. Um, I think even today, when we looked over the weekly fund flows, still money's going into money market funds. It was a record year for government bonds, fixed income, and money market funds in 2019. So there's a lot of cash on the sidelines. That's why I still think we're going to have a buy the dips mentality for the best part of the first half of this year. Dan, do you care much about the dollar as it relates yeah, to S&P no, 500? No, I, I do. And in, in, in this 96 to 100 range for the Dixie, the dollar index is kind of where it's been for the last 18 months. So it really hasn't had a big effect on U.S. corporate earnings quarter to quarter. I, I'll just say that. But I would say that that's what happens. When we entered QE 10 years ago, what were they doing? They were trying to weaken the U.S. dollar. Well, that's what they did again, right? So I, I, just, I guess I worry about everything that Sean just said in the context of this is a mid-cycle adjustment, right? But where Where's the CapEx? Where, how do we get that manufacturing? It can't just because we're working off inventories. The inventories might have been building because of double ordering because of the trade war. I, I take your point on that. Coming into an election year, it's a lot of uncertainty for going out and building huge investment projects, particularly with potential corporate tax changes by a, a Democratic Party. I think the one thing, again, just about the dollar is any time the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve has done QE, the dollar's always weakened. Expansion of balance sheet equals weaker dollar. Sean, in terms of where you perhaps uh, could be wrong, I'm looking through your, your notes and for your 2020 outlook, you are either bullish or modestly bullish on every single country. Well, that's the way we do things. We try to keep things reasonably equal. But you're not bearish on any country? We're not, not really aggressively bearish. No, I mean, we think actually the MSCI so every, world... every equity market... Well, actually, the year. irony is a weaker dollar is incredibly reflationary for emerging markets and for Europe. And as I said, most of the central banks in the G7 now have got real interest rates negative, generally a great backdrop for equity markets. When real interest rates went positive at the end of 2018, it was a disaster. So I think one of the paradoxes is we may be in a regime shift where real interest rates remain negative for a lot longer now from the central banks. So then does emerging markets look more attractive to you this year than, say, the U.S.? They do. I think you could have a big kicker, particularly on the signing of the trade dispute. That's the one big overhang. We're certainly seeing countries like Taiwan breaking out now as their PMI numbers start to improve. So, yes, you could get some really very big moves in the EM markets over the next 12 months.